What's up guys? Today we're going to take a little bit more of in-depth look at the crystals and how I use them. And I actually made a shocking discovery about one that I'm not so sure. I can't find the paper for it were originally said, but we'll get to that one in a moment. But I have these kind of sorted by chakras and uh, cleaning methods and stuff over here. Um, how I use those so we can get started. I'll start down here with the sea glass and that's just um, glass from the sea that's been tumbled and it's uh, believed that any rock or anything that's been uh, churned in water contains wisdom into it. And the sea glass, what does it do? Encourages adaptability and gives you strength in the face of adversity. This is one of my newer ones. It had gold edge on it, like the sea glass, and it came off. I've been using rubbing alcohol and stuff, trying to get that off, and I can't. Black Jasper, awesome grounding stone. My nails are dirty, so I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's a really awesome. I love to wear that one. I keep it uh, next to my call, the Ma Kali deity, and I don't know, it makes me feel powerful wearing it. I love it. So over here, I don't even want to show my nails now. I didn't realize how dirty they were. This is obsidian. And I kind of got these uh, laid out where protection, protection, protection. And grounding stone. Uh, the red adventuring is also. It, actually, all these are associated with the root chakra and their grounding stones. And what I love to do with my protection stone. Let me find a little space up in here. Um, here's a sigil of Archangel Michael. A bay leaf is a... Uh, powerful um, protecting herb so I grab three of the protectors I get those together and put it in a little bag you could, a black's a good powerful color Archangel Michael's color is red so I stick those in a bag and carry it around with me so I, that's what I like to do with these guys so I'll stick these back over here all right so this one the aragonite this is an earth healer and this is awesome grounder this is red jasper and this one over here, as you see, is Black Jasper. Um, the Smoky Quartz, uh, it's a good grounding stone as well. It's used in Feng Shui, and it absorbs EMFs. And the little earrings over here, the Red Adventuring, it is, what is that? It's a perfect for an introvert in an extroverted world. Think of this stone as a morning coffee or afternoon tea, the extra boost to get your blood uh, going. And um, we'll move up. This is the only one I have for the sacral chakra. And this is a carnelian stone. And it pairs well with that chakra. And it's for love and desire. And making unlikely friends. Self-care is uh, encouraged too. And attracting a partner that shares your spirituality. And up here, the citrine. Uh, definitely abundant stones. This is my absolute favorite. This is actually heat-treated amethyst. So you have the amethyst properties as well. I guess I like to call it amtrine. I don't know, this rock's my best friend. Something about it, I love it so much. And this is a zeolite I was talking about that was made out of uh, volcanic ash and alkaline water that helps uh, with all your chakras. And it also... Um, Uh-oh, mine went blank. <laughs> oh, it also helps access the Akashic Records. So, uh, the, the, oh, I forgot to say these two are associated with solar plexus. So you got your root chakra, sacral, solar plexus, moving up to heart chakra. Now, rose quartz is kind of just what it looks like, like a soothing, loving stone that's associated with heart chakra. This is too, uh, I found out what that's finally called, it's praiseolite, and that's the amethyst sister stone. So you kind of have the properties for that also um, with the heart chakra. Green onyx. Kind of the same as Rose Quartz, a very nice soothing heart chakra stone. This I used in my money drawing powder. I just took out of there for my, um, that uh, money magic I did the other night. I still can't figure out for the life of me what those are, but judging by the color, it's definitely something throat chakra. So I, if I needed work on that, I would carry it. Uh, Dalmatian stone, due to its color, um, definitely what I would use that for too. Now moving up, amethyst in certain cultures is associated with uh, the crown chakra, but I like to associate it with the third eye because it's known as the sleep stone, the dream stone. Uh, 
your pineal gland uh, is what helps with sleep and the third eye is associated with the pineal. So that's why I like to use that. This is sodalite, a really good third eye stone too. My parents have counters made of this. That's, that's crazy. I was like, love my little rock and they got like whole counters. Um, clear quartz is your master healer. And this can be used with any stone. You can hold it and program it with your intent for anything. Uh, if you want to charge, let's say stones, a quartz cluster, you can sit your little stones on it for about three hours. And um, yeah. And my, I got my blanket dirty for my sage. But yeah, master healer, you can do pretty much anything with this. This is cat's eye quartz. And you think of what cats, how cats are known to ward off evil. Um, that's exactly what these do too. They're also associated with the crown chakra. Um, they enhance discipline, concentration, good stuff. And a new one I got is this is strawberry quartz. It's actually associated with Atlantis and it's a really good dream uh, recall stone. This one over here is too and the colors you see in it are associated with those chakras. A great way to charge this guy is uh, put it in the garden next to some plants overnight. This is the shocking one. This is made of asbestos and everything I looked up, I mean it's not flaking off or nothing, but everything I looked up said basically stay the hell away from it. So that's the serpentine, so uh, yeah, stay away from that. Um, this, it marks up my fingers, but it's basically like a char charcoal based. It's found around Russia. It's the energy filter. So if you put it in your left pocket, I hear energy flows to your body through the left hand side. So um, if 